very good afternoon to all the students of class 10 d uh, yes beta we have done this poem yesterday only animals but uh, you know that before doing literary devices and before discussing the question answers i will just again discuss this poem because some students were not present yesterday fine let's uh, discuss in brief now okay i won't be doing it in that detail but i'm going to give the gist yes animals poem written by american poet walt whitman fine and this poem was actually an extraction taken from song of myself in leaves of grass so this is the work by walt whitman jisme se ye poem aapke syllabus mein aayi hai clear so what is the theme of this poem basically this is the contrast and comparison contrast means differences comparison is similarities fine but basically contrast hi hai is poem mein comparison ki bajaye so contrast between humans and animals is there fine animals are realistic humans are devious what does it mean that human uh, beings you know they have double standards they put up some other face they show something else to us but they are in uh, heart of hearts they are different but animalistic behavior jab hum kisi ko keh dete hain animals are the way they are they are presenting themselves the truth the the true face they are putting up they are not dubious okay whether they are being honest or not or oh, sorry whether, whether they are uh, being good or not but they are whatever they are in front of us then uh, animals uh, sorry humans are uh, ungrateful for what they have so you know an animal require just a food to eat and basic facilities but animal the human beings they are not at all sufficient with what they have they want more and more they want to accumulate wealth materialistic attitude they are having so they are not uh, grateful for what they have humans are always lurking for something or the other but animals are grateful for what they have fine they just love eating and sleeping and then that's all for them but human beings they want more and more animals are better than uh, humans according to or uh, according to poet walt whitman that's why he says that i could turn and live with animals means i can become an animal it, it, it's okay with me i can live with animals that's okay with me means I, if i will get life of an animal i'm thankful to god for that also because animals are better and if i have to live with animals even that's okay so animals are better companions according to walt whitman fine so very prominent theme i have you can see i have written uh, with white chalk they are segregated uh, color of chalk you can see so this is the basic uh, the most prominent theme of this poem animals animals have preserved they have saved many virtues like innocence simplicity honesty but humans have lost it somewhere this is the basic message of this poem please note it down please beta you need to note it down okay so animals have preserved many virtues innocence simplicity honesty but humans have lost it you know we people are being dishonest we are running after money we are clever and we have lost our simple ways of living also fine uh, earlier it was like only hand to mouth existence and people were just running after basic things like food shelter and clothing but now we are running after so many other things also so we have lost our simplicity we are not at all honest we say something else we do something else our actions and words do not match we are dishonest fine according to poet evolved with men but and we are not innocent also people were very you know simple earlier days if you compare people Uh, you can say if twenty years back, twenty five years back, people were so simple, honest. But nowadays, even a toddler is smart enough to tell a lie. Fine. So we people are into this vicious circle of dishonesty. So this is what poet is saying. Walt Whitman is saying to us. Okay. Then literary devices we will be doing. So in this poem, firstly, before uh, let me share the screen with you all. Before continuing with literary devices, beta, let's have a look of the poem also. and i am going to uh, ask the you to you now you will be giving me the example or you can say explanation fine who will like to speak raise your hand otherwise i will ask you okay uh we have a cm cm please unmute yourself and explain first stanza to me jaldi jaldi se please so that we can continue with literary devices cm uh, if you can hear me Forty three roll number. Jaldi yes, say. Yes, ma'am. Yes, but explain first stanza to me. That's it. Okay, ma'am. Uh, the speaker says that he wants to live with animals as he finds their world better to live in. 
uh, animals he thinks uh, they are more placid and self contained as they don't run as don't run after worldly possessions unlike human beings okay fine very good you can mute yourself now uh, vanita will you speak beta if any problem is there on your part you can uh, write in the chat box fine if it's okay uh, with you to unmute yourself and please participate okay vanita will you be able to it's not a voluntarily uh, if anybody is willing to speak that a person can speak agar koi problem hai you can tell me please i'll switch to some other student so in the first stanza as cm told us already that a uh, poet walt whitman says i think i could turn and live with animals means i can become if god turns me into an animal if i become animal or if i get a chance to live with animal both things are okay with me according to poet they are so placid placid means very at peace calm right they are so self satisfied self contained means they are self satisfied so according to poet he can be an animal or he can live with animals because they are very peaceful very uh, peace loving very calm and self satisfied fellows i stand and look at them long and long even poet says if he gets a chance to stare at them look at them for longer period of time of his life he would relish it he would enjoy it okay so uh, second stanza any boy any boy will like to please participate in this dakshita please you can speak agar boys nahi participate karna cha rahe hain to dakshita if you can hear me jaldi se itna time mat lagaya karo fir time waste hota hai usse i want participation also and it should be quick enough if any problem is there you text me otherwise maine mark absent kar dena aapko you text me that ma'am i'm not able to or whatever is the reason okay jiska kuch response nahi aayega iska matlab wo bachcha class nahi laga raha hai i'm very much sure the person who does not speak he is not attending the class jiya dhavan are you there jaldi jaldi quick next turn archi aapki hai okay I'm telling you beforehand then. Then time waste नहीं होएगा ऐसे. बताइए जल्दी से जिया धवन. See waste sheer wastage of time. I'm not going to mark you present. Archie. Good afternoon, ma'am. See, see the students who are ready to speak, they're always ready to speak. Like say, um, Archie, Princey, Tanya, even Divyansh, uh, Bisham. these are the students who are always ready to speak and really appreciate this thing well done beta not for giving the answer firstly being uh, listening to the instructions of the teacher at least yes beta you just explain this stanza i have highlighted on the screen in, in this stanza the poet says that the animals do not make complaints and cry about their conditions like humans do they do they do not commit commit sins like people like human beings and cry at the end of the day they do not make discussions about god for their duty not uh, every human being not every human but human beings are most of the time dissatisfied because of their condition they want more and more but animals are satisfied whatever the god has given to them yes very good you can mute yourself with that very good so in this stanza poet says that animals do not you know cry they do not whine about their condition that why they are like this they do not you know uh, after committing the sins firstly they commit the sins and after that they cry in the darkness and asking for mercy of god and you know praying to god and they do not make uh, poet sick for discussing their duty to god they are not at all dub having double standards they are honest to what they do they do not you know commit sins and afterwards they cry so they are uh, they are satisfied with what they have they are not at all demented here means i already told you demented is disturbed so they are not at all disturbed with the, they are not into the madness mania means madness of collecting the things of materialistic things they just want food they just want shelter that's it their day is made so they are not into the mad race of collecting the materialistic things they are not at all disturbed by this is dementing only when we are into this collection of things 
Fine. Not one kneels to another. Not to this kind. Live thousands. Anybody would like to explain this stanza? Jaldi se raise hand karo. Nahi to fir I will explain obviously. Anybody is there who wish willingly would like to? Two girls have already uh, explained. Sam and Archie. Any other who would like to explain the third stanza? Raise your hand. I will unmute you. No one is there. Not one kneels to. In this stanza, poet says that just like we people. Uh, you know, keep on bowing down. Kneeling means like, face to face, jumping. We bow down in front of the rich people and the people in power. But animals do not, you know, create differences by seeing the post or richness of a person. They do not kneel down in front of others. And uh, you know, uh, not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole. They are not at all unhappy about anything, and they are not even respectable towards their elders. Fine, we people are having double standards. We show our respect to elders, but we do not do it exactly. They show their relations to me, and I accept them. Whatever relations they are showing, whether good or bad, uh, poet is saying that he has never seen any, you know, animal showing his devotion to anyone by bowing down in front of the person, just like the way any human beings are doing. And they never do even for their ancestors, their forefathers. even they do not show devotion towards god like humans do fine so they are not like humans at all they never give more or less importance unke liye sabhi saman hai all are equal to them for us somebody is good somebody is bad somebody is having uh, somebody is rich somebody is poor so we have differences are man made not animals have made it or not god has created these are just man made fine so they never give more or less importance to any other animal every one in the animal world is happy they are not at all sad because unki koi expectations hi nahi hai fine so uh, we are the saddest people on this earth we keep on cribbing about the things we do not have so animals use other animals for the food yes they do use it fine but it does not mean they are at least being honest hum yahan pe kisi ko use bhi karte hain to hum batate nahi hain hum show karte hain that we are your friend only but except underneath we are using that person okay they bring me tokens of myself they evince them plainly in their possession evince means they show they show their possession clearly to the world they do not fake you know it uh, so uh, th their relations are very true fine animals use other animals yes but they are true to them in front of them poet says that he accepts this fact that animals are true towards showing their relation with other animals they are not showing or fulfilling fake relations with anyone fine so they are just fulfilling true relations i wonder where they get those tokens so poet at last is wondering he is uh, you know thinking that how these animals have preserved these virtues jo maine beginning mein message bataya tha aapko how these animals have preserved virtues like simplicity honesty innocence इनको किसने दिए और कैसे प्रिजर्व करके रखे हुए हमें भी मिले थे किसी को या फिर वी हैसली नेग्लिजेंटली मीन केयरलेसली है क्लियर है सबको बेटा प्लीज शो मी थम्स अप जल्दी से दोज अटेंडिंग द क्लास सबको पॉइंट क्लियर हो गई है आई एम गोइंग टू स्विच टू लिटररी डिवाइसेस नाउ प्लीज कीप योर पेंसिल्स इन योर हैंड्स नाउ फाइन और विद योर हेल्प आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अब आप मुझे बताओगे मैंने यहाँ पे एक लिस्ट लिखी हुई है यू कैन सी ऑन द बोर्ड एस रेपिटेशन एन एफ आर फाइन यू कैन सी वेरी वेल सो यू टेल मी आई विल एक्सप्लेन द डिवाइस हम बहुत बार लिटररी डिवाइसेस कर चुके हैं जितनी बार हम कोई पॉइम करते हैं उतनी बार हम डिवाइसेस डिस्कस कर चुके हैं सो यू टेल मी फर्स्ट इज असोनेंस वेयर वी हैव यूज्ड दिस जल्दी से बताइए क्लियर जल्दी जल्दी बताते जाइए इफ एनीबडी नोस व्हाट इज असोनेंस लेट मी टेल यू लेट मी गिव द रिमाइंडर यूज रेपिटेशन ऑफ बेटा वॉल साउंड आपको पता है 26 लेटर्स इन इंग्लिश 21 कंसोनेंट्स होते हैं फाइव वॉल्स होते हैं ए ई आई ओ यू जहां पे वॉल साउंड रिपीट हुआ है ए ई आई ओ यू में से दिस साउंड पांचों में से कोई भी फाइन इफ दिस वॉल साउंड इज रिपीटेड दैट इज नोन एज असोन एंस वेरी फर्स्ट डिवाइस सो वेयर इट इज यूज यू टेल मी एनी बडी कैन टेल मी जल्दी जल्दी से बी क्विक आई विल बी टेलिंग यू नो डाउट वो मैंने तो बता ही देना है यस दक्षिता वेरी गुड टेल मी 
Ma'am, in the line, I think I live with animals. Yes, very good, Dakshita. You can mute yourself. I think I live with animals. Beta, please underline it. I think I live. I word is repeated. I consonant nahi hai. I ek wall sound hai. Thik hai? So when uh, wall sound is repeated, to wo assonance hota hai. Clear? Well done, Dakshita. Now we have second device. You can see on the board. This is repetition. Now, what is repetition? To give stress on some idea, to give stress on something, poet uses the device of repetition. वो किसी word को, phrase को repeat करता है बार बार. ये तो किसी को भी पता होएगा. All the thirty-five participants, please raise anyone. Raise your hand. दक्षिता आपकी turn नहीं आएगी अब कोई और. दक्षिता की repeat में बाद में आएगी when four five students will be done. Next repetition तो बिल्कुल clear है बेटा. Very much clear. Very much clear. Anybody see the poem? देखिए. Uh, yes, Bhanu. Ma'am, the word long has been repeated. Yes, very good. So this is uh, same correct answer. Same has also typed in the chat box. Well done to those who are writing the answers and putting in efforts. So long word is repeated. Repetition device है ये. Clear? Please keep on noting down, beta. उसके बाद वर्ड आई हैव रिटन एनाफोरा एनाफोरा मैंने आपके साथ बहुत बार डिस्कस किया है वट इज एनाफोरा एनाफोरा आई गेस दो जगह पे यूज हुआस वेन सम वर्ड आर रिपीटेड इन द बिगिनिंग लाइन ऑफ द पोएम क्लियर रेपिटेशन होता है कि बीच में कहीं पे जैसे यहाँ पे लॉन्ग एंड लॉन्ग लास्ट में यूज हुआ है fine when in the beginning of the line some words are used yes same you have given correct answer raise your hand other students also i will speak same your answer very good you are giving all the answers what about others aryan sarangal yes they do not very good beta so aryan uh, has given the answer nahi dakshita i word ko nahi lenge hum beta when word or phrase i is like simple assonance mein humne use kiya they do not Sweat. They do not lie. They do not make me sick. Underline these lines, beta. Fine, because I want to show you the board also. That's why I'm not sharing the screen. आपके पास books हैं. Please note down. क्योंकि note down आपको करना है अपने books पे. They do not को underline कर लो. तीनों lines में. This is the example of anaphora when some words are repeated in the beginning lines of stanza. So fourth is metaphor. Metaphor when comparison is made. Fine. डायरेक्ट कंपेरिजन इज मेड ऑफ टू थिंग्स विदाउट यूजिंग एज और लाइक जब एज और लाइक यूज होता है तो वो सिमिली होता है कंपेरिजन के लिए वेन विदाउट यूजिंग एज और लाइक देन दैट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मेटाफर सो यू टेल मी वेयर डायरेक्ट कंपेरिजन इज मेड ऑफ समथिंग रेज योर हैंड रेज योर हैंड बेटा स्वेट एंड वाइन अकॉर्डिंग टू ईशा प्रीत और नो no, वो नहीं है वैसे मतलब फॉर एग्जाम्पल ईशा प्रीत नो बट इज देर ओके लेट मी टेल यू दिस एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मेटाफर हेयर इज बेटा सी इन दिस पोएम टोकन ऑफ यू कैन से दे हैव यूज दिस इनर क्वालिटीज ऑफ ह्यूम आर रेफर्ड एज टोकन हेयर फाइन यहाँ पे लिखे ना दे ब्रिंग मी टोकन Uh, tokens it does not mean uh, tokens in direct way uh, actually poet is trying to say they they show their true qualities to me fine so quality word ki bajaye usne tokens word use kiya hai it is the comparison of this word with this direct comparison so the example of metaphor is inner qualities of humans are referred to as tokens here okay so underline this this is the example of metaphor niche se aapki fourth line hai beta you can just note it down okay then after that beta uh i have written personification what is the device of personification you tell me anybody personification kya hota hai kisi ko pata hai most of the students are Typing in the chat box. Bism knows this. Yes, Bism, please answer, beta. To give human-like qualities to non-living objects. 
Very good. So when human-like qualities are given to objects, things, etc., or sometimes even animals, right? So we have, you know, we are making this puri poem mein personification use hua hai. Yes, Princey, correct answer. Attributing living qualities to inanimate things. Very good. This is the way we, you know, explain the things. So uh, when uh, human qualities are given to inanimate objects. Yes, but animals are not inanimate objects here. But yes, we are using, but we never use word they, he, she for animals also. But in this poem, uh, you know, poet Walt Whitman has directly used this word, uh, pronounced they for animals. You can see they do not sweat, they do not like. So this is the example of personification. He is addressing animals equivalent to human beings. Okay. So that's why personification is used throughout the poem. Specifically, when he is addressing them by using pronoun they, which is used for animals. But a clear as Next device is sixth number pe maine board pe likha hua hai. If you can see at my back, alliteration. What do you mean by alliteration? Jaldi se bataiye. Alliteration kahan pe use hua hai? Or what is alliteration? You have to tell me. Alliteration is... Repetition of a letter at the start. Yes, Bhanu, very good. So, uh, alliteration is repetition of consonant sound. Okay, aapko yaad rakhna hai. When repetition of a ball sound hai, to wo number one wala assonance hota hai. When repetition of consonant sound, find A, E, I, O, U ko chhod ke, 21 consonant letters are there. So when consonant sound is being repeated at the beginning of any word, that is known as alliteration. Just say, I uh, brave boy beating him. So I'm repeating B sound in three words consecutively, minimum two, maximum as many as possible. So this is the device of alliteration, okay? Sturdy and strong students. So S sound is repeated, alliteration. So tell me where it is used in this poem. No, Isha Preet, long and long, jo hai, wo repetition ke liye use kara hai. Yes, Aryan Sarangal, well done. Wonder where they get those tokens. Wonder where, fine. So W sound is repeated here. This is one example of alliteration one more is there you tell me keep on noting down side by side mainly possessions yes you can say that bilkul uh, third line beta niche se poem ki plainly in their possession underline this niche se third line hai poem ki plainly in their possession this is the example of alliteration clear the next is rhetorical question. What is rhetorical question? Uh, CM Nilika, they do not make me sick. Nay, beta, this is not the device. Uh, we have done two over there. We have done this. Now, uh, yes, rhetorical question is when a question is being posed and an answer is also given yes very good bisam has recognized it clearly anybody else kisi ko pata chala hai kahan pe rhetorical question pucha gaya when a question is asked to the audience to the readers by the author or by the poet an answer is already known to all of us hame pata hota hai answer yes very good bhanu and bisam has given the correct both have given the correct answer well done last line of the poem did I pass that way huge times ago and negligently drop them? Question mark. So this is rhetorical question, which is our seventh literary device. And now, paradox. Anybody will tell me what is paradox? And where it is used in this poem? All devices are done by us very nicely with maximum student participation. Anybody knows? Okay, shall I? 
The paradox is a statement that appears at first to be contradictory, but upon reflection. Okay, Bissam has given the uh, definition, typical definition of paradox. Yes, it is correct. So paradox is a uh, situation. Uh, find uh, like when uh, opposite qualities are presented in one statement. Fine, like a situation or statement with two or more parts that seem impossible together. Though as a parts, wo hi discuss hue ho, but they are opposite to each other. That is the situation of paradox. So you tell me uh, paradox uh, in uh, this poem, Animals, where it is used, tell me that, jaldi se bataiye. The whole, this whole session goes to you. I have not done anything in this. You people are telling me answers. I'm just reading and speaking your answers only. Jaldi se bataiye. In which line paradox is used? Who is there attending the class and we are response? Because there are some students, I seem to be there, just there. Pratham Soni, are you there? Pratham Soni. Aapko do din hue class join karte hue. And Daksh is uh, the one who enters the, in the last uh, 10 minutes and the thinks that he will be marked the present. It is not going to happen, okay? Those who are not responding, this is your loss only, not ours. Please make sure. So the first line begins with a paradox, fine. So he's talking about human qualities, uh, which is not otherwise possible, but he has used those qualities uh, which are existing in animals, but they belong to human beings, fine. This is the way of explaining to the people or to, to the readers, fine. So mania of uh, owning things, uh, is also he's like you know showing that paradox of the situation so in this way we end up our poem animals with literary devices now let's discuss the question answers yes beta question answers jaldi se raise your hand for page number 84 let me share the screen This is what we are going to discuss. Notice the use of word turn in the first line. I think I could turn. What is the poet turning from? Very easy. Uh, in this uh, question, the poet is using the word turn to become an animal. Fine, he's saying that I can also, you know, uh, turn uh, myself into an animal because animals are so good and so innocent and so simple that even I can live their life. Fine. So that's why poet is, uh, you know, using this word. He is turning from, poet is turning from human being to animal. So this is the answer. Clear? Poet is turning away. Actually, he's turning away from this hum human, uh, living in the human society. So poet is turning away from living in the world of human beings. He finds animals world much better than the human beings. That's why he wants to turn himself from human being to an animal. This is the answer of first question. Second is mention three things that humans do and animals do not. Please keep on giving answers. Raise your hand. Saksham Grover, no participation at all. Manmeet Singh. Second question is, Mention three things that humans do and animals do not. The three things that humans do and animals do don't are as follows. Humans complain and cry about their miseries and sorrows. Animals never do. Humans lie awake in the night thinking about their wrongdoings. They cry. Animals never do. Humans also keep on telling others about their duties towards uh, God and all, but animals never do this. So these are the three things. I'm going to discuss because I need to finish it off. Please stay two minutes there. Third question is, do humans kneel to other humans who lived thousands of years ago? Yes, humans kneel to other humans who lived thousands of years ago. They could be some ancestors, they could be saints, they could be preachers, they could be God, but he, animals, they never do so. Fine, they worship uh, and they do uh, co continue their preaching also. Fine, 
so yes human beings kneel down in front of others by seeing their prestige boast etc but animals never do so what are the tokens that the poet says he may have dropped long ago and which the animals have kept for him the word tokens according to the poet is the good qualities in human beings they have lost their good jo maine message clear kiya tha beta that good virtues like innocence and simplicity and honesty the poet feels that nowadays good qualities do not exist they have lost them for the sake of worldly things or they are running after materialistic things and they have either lost them or they have dropped them somewhere i guess uh, questions are clear to you beta okay this poem is done so please do the question answers of animals in the fair notebook okay have a nice day